What's popular YouTube? Another day, another demo, and we are into number 17 with seven days left on this journey through the HLTV top 20 prediction list. I have made some updates. As you can see, the thumbnail is now a reference to uh, to this. I want to shout you out for this one. Give you a, a, a love right there, uh, Ark. I think it's super fun. Like, who's that Pokemon TV shows? I actually thought that was a really funny comment, and I remember that. And I was like, yeah, that is a that is a fun thing that I really enjoyed. So you know what? It, it, I know I know when you like you're watching, you think I understand all these different things, but I it feels like you read you some comments tip the way that I my impression of the of the of the viewers are. If that makes sense. Like, I it, it depends on what I read to figure out kind of where where I think people stand. But clear, like obviously, there's going to be you know a few different kinds of viewers: people who are watching for the first time, people who are recurring viewers, people who are like enjoying the content, people who are like liked other content, whatever it is. So it does help, I, and I to to at least to know that this is kind of fun. Because when I when I started doing, it, I was like, yeah, it's kind of fun. I liked it. But then some people were like, why do you take 15 minutes to say Dupree? And I'm like. But no big deal. Uh, uh, if uh, clearly there are a lot of people who actually think it's it's pretty fun. I'm making these videos for those people um, and myself, of course. So we'll we'll keep going with that. Um, appreciate the feedback. And I think what I'll do is when all these videos are done, I'll normalize all the thumbnails so that they're just uh, a playlist with just like they're all they all look stylistically the same. And then we can put them up in the top as a top twenty. And then next year it'll be in order. And we have to. We'll never never have to you know pretend that we had to do it this way, and it'll be a lot better. I've also updated the spreadsheet so that it says who is HLTV's top twenty, top nineteen. So yesterday we actually had JKS, so maybe we should talk about that for a second. Um, we had JKS come in at number nineteen, uh, and he tweeted out that he was hoping to be higher, but he'll work harder for this year to to come in uh, at a higher placing, and. I, I think the, of course, you should all read these articles that are, they're always on the front page of HLTV if you want to find them in case I forget to link them in the description. I'll try to link them. I just, yeah, I can, I definitely, link, I'll, I'll link this article in the description. I just w didn't want to link things that would be like spoilers, like the match page and stuff, but um, it's whatever. I mean, if you go there to look for it, then, you know, you get what you deserve, the, the, the spoiler if you're looking for it. So, okay. What's the deal here? I mean, JKS is not somebody who was even on my radar to be on this list. And it wasn't because I didn't feel like he could be considered a top rifler this year. It was more so that, uh, ooh, a junior is a prediction. It, it would be more so that, um, uh, it would be more so that, like, he, it didn't really have the, it, it, it was a weird year, right? Because he joined Complexity after Oboe left. So for these of you who don't know, Oboe, uh, was a basically a star rifler for complexity. He was a very, very good rifler. And I think this is the one roster move that unanimously people felt like... Where can I find Oba? Oh, there it is. Slide. Okay. That unanimously, unanimously that uh, JKS would be an improvement to Oboe on complexity. Now, that being said, that's not a slight at Oboe because Oboe is a really good... I mean, I... I I think it's actually, you know, it's kind of crazy that that is the one roster move that people would call an upgrade because Oboe was a key piece for complexity. It was very strong. It's just in terms of roles and stuff, it felt like JKS was going to fit in nicely um, to his positions and then bring a bit more experience. You know, be able to keep up uh, mechanically plus experience plus like, you know, people have always wanted to see him on another team that wasn't uh, the Renegades or 100 Thieves. So... Yeah, so, yeah, but I mean, like, obviously, you look at the event history for Oboe, and it's very impressive, man. He, he had a very good year himself, um, and this, yeah, it, it, it's not, a, not an easy, it, these are they're big shoes to fill for JKS, right? Um, but uh, he did a great job, I think, straight off. He, he, did, he did a fantastic job of slotting in. Let's see what their, basically, his first event with complexity was Blast Mirror Fall Series. This was impressive, man. We were following closely, Chad especially, and I, I. I would say I was like watching these games very intently and uh, casted a couple of them. And you know, so we saw some strong maps. I mean, he had a high average of kills. He was putting up pretty good ratings versus strong teams. It was fun to watch. It was good. And look at how close these games are too. Lots of 16-14s in here. Uh, two that went the favor of Vitality. This could have been a win 
uh, that would have brought complexity even further. So, uh, yeah, I mean, very impressive first tournament with the team and then continued on to, to do well. It started to fall off here, but these are weird marks because we have Poison who's out, and then it's like JKS is new, plus Poison is out. So much stress on the whole team. So you, it's hard to give minus marks for these events. Um, but then that being said, you know, it's not that many events in Europe once again. Like, of course, we're backloading the list on HLTV when we look at the list with a bunch of the uh, NAs, NAs players, basically. JKS, Breeze. Um, it feels like these are these are the positions where they're going to be in. But this, to me, means that Elise and, and, and Yuri and maybe Henny or maybe K Serato, who are very close, or maybe Naf or something, or could actually be on this list. Which I don't think is... I, I, I really... I, I'm not a big fan of that. Because I feel like that's taking spots away from players who are playing much harder games versus better competition all year, all, all year long. I, I don't know. But we'll see. We'll see what the rationale is. You know, I... Um, as some people say that, you know, maybe my list is, is better than HLTV's list. I don't think that's true. I think, you know, they put a lot of time into these lists. And, you know, far more time than I put in. Uh, you know, looking at the numbers, we might have disagreements and we might both be objectively wrong in certain spots. Right. But, um, you know, of course it, it's just, it's again, this list is for fun and, uh, it's something that I guess it depends where you're coming from, from the logic perspective, uh, where you feel players are better than others. That's another question that's completely subjective. So, you know, it's really uh, it, in comparing the lists, it's mostly just about having fun and in disagreeing about what we think is the right answer and what isn't, we learn more, right? We learn more. Arguing is kind of good because it forces you to confront your own ideas before they leave your mouth. When you know that somebody is going to snap back at you with their own reasoning and logic, then you have to really give your thoughts uh, a bit more, um, a bit more thought. You have to, you have to really make sure that you're saying something that you believe in because you're going to put it out there and allow it to be attacked. So I think from that perspective, arguing can be pretty healthy, pretty good as long as it's civilized, but yeah. Okay. So that is that. So who is going to be my prediction for the number 17 player for HLTV? Because I've already thrown out uh, Yuri and Elise. And of course that means for me that for HLTV, I'm not, ex I wasn't expecting to see other NA players on the list well i think that uh this next player was pretty impressive had a high amount of uh evps and mvps uh had a strong year with mixed events some events that were um uh, a lot of the event uh, all the events were versus eu competition but not um not all of the events versus tier one eu competition similar to another player that might be on the list a little bit later or actually who is on the list a little bit later. He is a, a player who was regarded as one of the strongest players, if not the strongest, at Flashpoint. He was a player who was second on the list of this team to, I say, to that I would say uh, had uh, overperformed or done really, really well, had an, an overall extremely impressive year, even though you know the quality of the events, my, quality of the events might not have been that great. He this is a player who did fall off a bit versus tier one competition in 2020, and it is the reason that he's not higher up on my list. I think I've given enough hints. This, of course, is Valda. This is my prediction for number 17 for HLTV in the top 20. I think I um, yeah, and I have him. For my own list at number 19, I really valued this stat line here with, you know, almost 30 maps played to have uh, fallen off in the in the very in the kind of the most important matches as opposed to like, you know, Montu, who I have very high on HLTV's list just because I was so impressed by that stat line of, you know, big match player. And uh, even though some of the events were mixed, he was consistent throughout plus high performances in big matches. Um, this was kind of like, uh, you know, he did really well here at Flashpoint. He did really well here at Open Summer. He scored okay here at, at DreamHack, uh, at, at Blast Premier. And listen, they, they came first to third in the group. It's fine. That's all you really need is, is the win at the end of the day. But of course, this is just for fun. DreamHack Masters Spring, you know, he's not, he's not failing in these positions. He's just not exceeding in the same way that he is at some of these other events. Whereas like 
Montu was literally, you know, even better um, at some of these harder events. So I thought that was pretty impressive. And um, here's Cologne's a very good rating for him in Cologne, actually. And this is, you know, part of the reason that he's still on this on this list in the first place. Um, overall, decent at, at pro league. You know, a a, a sea of weed here, right? Sea of green for Valda, a very strong rifler. Glad to see him on. Uh, let's compare his 2020 to his 2019. Glad to see him on um, OG. I think. Uh, what the? Oh, I see. Glad to see him on OG after North. Really wanted to see him um, play on a better team. And I. What do we see? In 2019, was he, he was on North for this whole year, right? Because the team. So OG only existed since December 2019, I believe, and then played Blast Premier right after that. So, yeah, a year of playing on North, not a great position to be in. Um, I think he was pretty unmotivated. So he's improved his ratings here versus top five teams. This might be a climb that needs to continue to happen uh, for OG to win some more or actually win an event because they have not won an event yet. Uh, even though we've topped groups here for OG and had some very impressive results, as a roster, we have completely, we have climbed nonstop but we have not achieved. Uh, we have not achieved. And of course, not the greatest year to be trying to achieve, right? This is also a year where Issa is playing in Jordan with like 100 plus ping. Uh, and we know his level and we know that he plays much better on uh, on LAN. And we know that he's just made for it with the energy and everything. Him and Woxic, I feel like when they go back to LAN, um, yeah, they're going to be feeding off. Uh, they're going to be feeding off their teammates really well. But for the meantime, you know, it's Alexi B, socially isolated Finnish man who performs extremely well, um, no matter what the circumstances, even far away from his teammates. It's a bit spotty here for Alexi B, but honestly, some of the most impressive scorelines in, in individual maps on this team sometimes. Curious to see if like what his, his stats overall is just very even. Uh, yeah. His T size we've seen a lot of, and he does a lot of, um, I don't want to say sacrificial plays, like he's trying to get kills, but he is, you know, entering with a tricky smoke and trying to get a kill and then creating space. And it's very much like um, like Glaive in a sense. He's a very hard player to rate because honestly, I think I would say Glaive's stats tanked this year, but I'm not sure. Let's go ahead and see because I feel like his role has developed quite a bit. So this is 2020. And this is 2019. Things changed a little bit here. Uh, his rating seems to have gone up. His ADR down. Um, yeah, his impact down. So I, 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 I honestly, I don't. I actually don't rate this impact stat. I don't think it's a very good one. From from what I've seen from certain players, I used to use like reference this a lot, but I really don't think this stat is accurate to the actual impact of the player. I just don't think it is. Um, personally, it's the one stat I don't really trust on this. Um, on this page, even though I used to reference it a lot. Now, there are some other examples that I can't remember yet, but uh, yeah. But anyways, I, uh, you know, Glaive, Glaive is someone who just makes key plays all the time, uh, key plays for the map the whole time. And so does Alexi. Um, and they kind of play the same on TT sides. They, they uh, and yeah, they, I mean, they take first contact a lot. They get a lot of information. They, and the information gets used. It's not just like, I died. I got info. It's like, this is relevant info that is going to help us right now uh, because we realize that, you know, X and X player are out of position. Okay, so now we're going to go into the game to watch a Valda demo. Already a bit late here. Um, I don't know how I keep doing this. Oh, I'm also uploading a chess video. Oh, we're, we're CL left hand. Just putting in the... Cool. Uh, also uploading a chess video today. Kind of random, but I I have been streaming chess and playing chess a lot, and it's just like I feel like I should just be. I, I feel like I don't know. People have been watching, so I feel like it might be interesting to watch me improve at something. Um, I don't know if you guys have an interest in chess. <laughs> uh, that sucks. Dying to a guy sitting opposite firebox when you split connector. So you see Breeze's position there in the corner of the site. He doesn't want to fight people coming up connector. Maybe on a pistol round, it's okay, but 
he can't move from that spot, right? So he's tucked opposite firebox, hoping that they like execute A, not that they run up connector into him, and he still gets two kills. Um, but yeah, I'm gonna upload like a random chess game. I did a little intro for it, so like it'll make a little bit more sense. But I feel like if I'm playing, you know, if I'm making the content, like I'm playing uh, games on stream or something, I might as well just be like uploading stuff. Uh, if it's not too offensive, if you hate it, you want me to remove it, tell me, I'll, I'll get rid of it. We'll do no more chess stuff. Um, if you find it interesting, go for it. I feel like there's going to be some overlap between people who watch videos like this and people who may or may not like chess. I, uh, I'm dog shit, but I played a little bit back in May after watching XQC and, um, Hikaru play it. And I've just been watching like so many chess videos on YouTube again. So I was like, I'll, uh, start over. I know a total of one opening, the London. I don't know how to play it properly. I get about halfway in and then I uh, just start mid-rounding, if you will. <laughs> Speaking of the mid-round, look at these rotations. We've got the T's going over to B apps. Oh, it's a QB sneak, as we like to say. Bomb by itself on the other side of the map. Hey guys, you enter B and then we'll run up A ramp. Let's see how it goes. idea here just get out you see how entry fraggers just die like his goal is not even to get a kill did mbk throw nades 1900 oh he got spotted on the ramp i see he took some damage okay that didn't work out too well he was just trying to catch a fast rotation if possible oh let's get far into this round my fault and now we'll get to pay attention to what so we watched Montu on a T side and a kind of a weird uh, T side where he had impact, but the team didn't play very well. So this, I think this is a different game. I'm hoping. I'm hoping this is a different game. Let me go ahead and check actually, just to see. Uh, Twenty E G and match page. Just want to double check. It is a different game. Okay, cool. So what we can pick, compare with this different game is the T side where, first of all, we got the rifle instead of the op. Um, and we can also see like from a team perspective how OG may have played better or worse. And then, uh, and this is this is from the fall series where I think the Man 2 series was from the spring. Oh, wow, that's a the tucked in position from Stanislaw. And it, it looks like they were just they were just going to go ahead with a B fake into an A split with uh, maybe MBK jumping underpass. And instead are we're rerouting. So they're going forward with the split. What's funny about this is like they get a false flag here, right? Because Stanislaw, so they won't know Montu's this far up. So it's actually, I think, good for him to peek in this position, like to try to get a little bit farther out because he got the because MBK got the kill so early. So here he can go for the back triple plant or this plant, which is crazy risky. Um, and nobody peeks him. There's respect here. So where does he want to go with this? I realize we're not even watching Vald anymore because he died, but I'm invested into the outcome of this round now. Well, now they're in proper positions. I mean, this should be a hard round to lose. MBK is low, yes, but it comes down to the nades the CTs have, and it looks like they're going to come up connector and not expecting Montu to have crossed in the jungle, which is a big risk that he took. So sometimes if you take a big risk early on, well, he doesn't want to die there. Okay, but there's, yeah, I guess there's no way for him to live anyway. Okay. Sometimes if you take a risk earlier in a post plant, you'll, you know, if you do that more often, I think in the long run, you won't regret it. People who wait around too long because they're scared will eventually be in a position later on that they could have avoided being in. Um, so, and you got to recognize when it's good to take a risk and when it's not, of course, right? If you have a, you know, a man advantage situation with way more nades and all the stuff, like maybe you don't need to like try to run out by yourself and find a kill or push for information. Oh, and here are just some crazy trades that are going down on a full B hit. It's looking good. A couple entries by Montu is the big reason, I'd say. Um, but, you know, if you're in a, a 3v3 but one of your teammates is very low on HP and you think the CTs might be a little bit farther out, then hey, that might be a situation where you want to try to 
take a risk for like the best after plant position possible to just walk out there like Mantu did or to swing on something together where, you know, you could have just sat back on a ramp or palace. But I mean, you don't have to think about it too hard, right? Just think about like, do I feel like we're at an advantage in this round or not? And if not, how do I get, how do I get back to an advantage round without, um, uh, instead of just letting them retake? and knowing that they're going to win in the retake. Also, it's very situational advice because... Oh, is that smoke going to land properly stairs or just... Oh, right at the top connector. So you see that? that oh, that's so good. So the connector smoke lands and then Alexi B can stand on the bench and fight stairs. That is so nice. That is so nice. I actually love how that works out. That was really cool. If he had, yeah, I mean, he could have smoked jungle and whatever, but Alexi wouldn't get the kill. The smoke lands on connector, and then you see the guy on stairs. He's scared when that smoke lands in connector, because now the T's that'll peak from sight are not going to worry about connector. So he knows he's going to get hard cleared, and he has nowhere good to stand. Very nice smoke from uh, Valda. I would pause on that one, try to copy. I'm not sure what the point of reference was, because there was a smoke on stairs. So I'm not sure what he lined it up with. Gotta always be careful when you see one ways on the ramp like this, just because you don't know if the one way is intended or not. You know, in year eight of CS, it might be a one way they were looking, they wanted you to find. Lots of spams being active here, uh, as opposed to just sitting back and waiting for someone to peek. This is something that you as a team have to decide, you know, who is gonna be spamming and who's gonna be holding. Right, because if someone's spamming a box and then someone swings out, if you don't have somebody else watching that, then that guy who was spamming has to now flick and has to use way less ammo than the other player to like make sure they win the duel. So that's really where communication comes in. Beastly 2k spray down, and I think they've got info on the last player. Yep, he is in the jungle. And here here's kind of what a, here's like an example of like, okay, why why stand in the same place when CT spawn is free? I can now like, yeah, punish the CT fallback as well as uh, get into the best post plan position possible, right? So that's the value of information right there um, in, a, like, in a very simple way. If you have a position where, yeah, you know, you know where someone is, then go ahead and take advantage of the space that, that's now, that now exists on the map. It's really not more complicated than that. Now what space you take and like how and stuff, those, those finer details are... Uh, will be discovered as you play more, but the I think the long and short of it is is the same, right? If you if you knew where every player on the map was, where would you stand? Getting closer and closer to that is the idea behind you know good positioning. How, how do we get the info info from communication from the mini map, from your nades, from your spams? from your kills and then using that to in improve your position like you would in chess, I guess, like you would in chess. Except chess is played with complete information. So it's a little, it's a little bit different, but there are situations in CS where, you know, it's not totally about deception. It's just about giving the player remaining um, no good option. Like, a player might know that you're there. Okay. There's, there's a good situation. They try to re-smoke and... Oh, a perfect spam shoulder peek. It's a headshot through the door. Look at the movement. Valda is flying now. That was actually a pretty sick couple of entries. And here's a spot where you're trying to end up on. Um, on the B site. When you get the two kills, you can freely run across the site and not clear things. In other situations, you would have to be mi more mindful of positions on the on the site. The smoke is actually kind of weird because it allows someone to get out of the market door, and now Valda has to watch it with like this, you know, maybe someone crouching around looking for feet. It's a little bit da more dangerous. You normally don't want your smokes to be this poofy. You think, oh, poofy smoke means oh, more time that they're smoked out. Well, it also means like more angles that they can now exit. 
So, so uh, smokes only have value when you can watch them. And if you can't watch all of the all of the whole smoke, then it has less value. I forgot what I was talking about just before that. <clears throat> Oh yeah, I mean Valda getting to that position in the corner watching the it covers a door and window all at once has a huge advantage versus the window, less of an advantage versus the door, but still an advantage. It's the position that doesn't get cleared, but if Valda shoots, then it's a pull the pin play. His teammate can can peek off of the back of the default or something else and trade easily. So that's a really important spot for Tease to get to when you're like getting out into the B site to like establish control. It's your final flag on the site. Say this is our territory now. You have to get through this and this is going to cost you. Whether or not you get this kill, it's going to cost you a trade. It might not even you might not be able to get the trade. It's a very powerful spot. Under Balk. Oh no, it's a ramp. And okay, let's see how they deal with this opper. They're going to go up and over. Oh, and Cirque dies to Valda, falling back down the ramp. Two players from the stairs are shooting, and he doesn't expect the second. Round one and done. Some nice fluid rotations here by Team OG. And yeah, they're, they're, their Mirage is sick. Their Mirage is sick. It's very fun to watch. Stair smoke for Valda. And another A hit. Okay, so see how the, the, the molly lands specifically on the outside of that smoke just so that they don't have to watch it for a second while they clear other stuff out. And they punish anybody who runs through if they want to go for an off pick through the smoke. The nades are very messy on the site, but oh my god. That is just... That is just pure hours, right? Like, that is a kill that comes because you just know the angle. Oh, he knows he's going to cross the bench. That's so good by Ethan. You'd love to see that. Uh, I guess it looks like there's still Ethan connector, and they're trying to figure out one more option. But you know, Valda getting that kill, Ethan getting that kill, it's just hours, right? You know how people react. You're going for the pre-fires, the spams. That's what it's all about. Okay, Ethan punished, and now they just uh, they open up CT spawn. Circus spotted here, but they they can double up. They're connect. They're communicating, right? The two pieces are communicating. That's what makes this situation very strong. So if Issa shoots and, and Sir gets the kill, Alexi can peek. This is the idea. And he can take first contact, and Alexi can just make sure he doesn't run up um, on the side. So we'll see. If Alexi shoots, then they'll have to change it up a little bit. But he, yeah, he starts to walk around, and Alexi gets the kill. A good, uh, a good demo, an interesting demo. And I, I'm going to upload this really fast. This 155. <sighs> My God, gigabit internet, though. It's coming up quick. All right. I'll see you tomorrow for another Coach Loud and some chess later. Peace out.